نحمد هو ونسل على رسوله الكريم ما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد نرى تقلب وجهك في السماء فلن ولي أنك قبلة ترضاها فول وجهك شطر المسجد الحرام وحيث ما كنتم فول وجوهكم شطرة وإن الذين أوتوا الكتاب لا يعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وما الله بغافل عما يعملون وقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما صدق الله العظيم respected and honorable elders brothers mothers sisters and little ones assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh as we head in these last few days of the blessed month of ramadan and search for this blessed night of laylatul qadr it is reported in the hadith to the effect that the night of laylatul qadr lies in the odd night 21 23 25 27 and 29 of the last 10 days of the blessed month of Ramadan but there are also some hadith that state that it falls in the even nights of uh, the last 10 days also majority scholars hold the view that it falls in the odd nights of the blessed month of Ramadan but nonetheless in these last 10 days whether it falls on the even or whether it falls on the odd we still should spend these days in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exert ourselves in attaining as much as we can in this blessed month of Ramadan where Allah has his sail on and where everything is multiplied where a nafil is rewarded up to a farz and a farz up to 70 faraid subhanallah any other time we will not receive this reward and in, we don't know today we are here and we are present next year maybe we may not be around till next ramadan look around us how many people have left this world before ramadan had approached and when ramadan had come they did not witness ramadan you and i are fortunate that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and i to witness ramadan once again may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to do, to see many more ramadan inshallah but now whilst we are here let us value this ramadan and make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my fellow listeners allah is upset with us the ummah has done something where allah has become upset with us this is why we see that the masajids are closed this is why we see that only few selected people have been given the ability to enter the masjid and the masses have been deprived so let us turn towards allah in repentance in these beautiful days of ramadan when the evil shayatin are locked up and beg of his mercy to reopen the doors of the masjid the best places on the face of this earth are the masajid and today we have been deprived of the masajid let us pray to allah that he opens up the masajid once again so where we pray there and we come and we ask from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you and all of us the tawfiq to exert ourselves in the last remaining days of the blessed month of Ramadan so we reap the blessings from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we finish Ramadan in such a manner that we have been forgiven by the almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like the day our mothers gave us birth ameen ya rabbal alamin continuing with the blessed seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
As mentioned yesterday, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had this desire that he faced towards the house of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the qibla, the Kaaba. As at that time, the Kaaba was Masjid al-Aqsa, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Makkah al-Mukarramah used to face in such a way that he used to face towards the Hajj al-Aswad side, which used to face towards Masjid al-Aqsa also in that way. He used to face the Kaaba as well as Masjid al-Aqsa. But in Madinah al-Manawwara, this was not possible. So he always had this desire that the he faced towards the Kaaba. Allah subhanahu and he would look always look towards the heavens. Rasulullah sallam ki hamesha ye khayish thi ke Kaaba ki taraf ruh kiya jaye. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the verses whilst in Salah فَوَلِّ وَجْحَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامُ قَدْ نَرَا تَقَلُّبَ وَجْحِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ And saying that we could see that you raise your eyes towards the heavens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and turn the Qibla towards Masjid al-Haram which is the Kaaba in Salah, they turned within Salah and in Salah, they turned around and some say they turned fully around or some say whilst they were there, they turned around and the Imam went through and this is how uh, they turned facing towards uh, the Kaaba. Farmate hai ke masjid namaz hi ke andar ye hukam aya aur namaz hi ke andar wo qibla rukh badal diye. And they changed the qibla facing towards the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Kaaba. This all happened in the second Hijri. Many such things, events took place in a second Hijri as we will hear as going along. In the second Hijri, this Hukam was released. After the change of the Qibla, the direction in where they used to face, here this area now was reserved for the Ahl al-Sufa the people of the bench. Who was the Ahl al-Sufa? Ahl al-Sufa were those poor and destitute who would reside behind the house of Allah subhanahu the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam just behind in the masjid the masjid Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wasallam a raised platform used to be there which is still present today and here is where the Ahl al-Sufa used to stay and these Individuals, these Ahl al-Sufa, the people of the bench, were those individuals who gave their life and everything they had, which they hardly possessed anything. And they gave their life and everything they possessed as work for Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Hurayn radiallahu ta'ala and he mentions at the time there was about 70 Ahl al-Sufa. As time went, it increased and it decreased up and down. But the Ahl al-Sufa were the people of the bench. Ahl al-Sufa were faqeer or ghurabat hai jo ke mashe nabawi mein rehte the aur inko Ahl al-Sufa ka jata tha. Ye wo gharib aur miskeen aur ghurabat hai jo jinnon ne apni jaan Mal, jism, sab ko Allah aur Rasul ke liye wakaf kar diya. As Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala would say that Ahl al-Sufa was so poor that they didn't have enough chadar to cover themselves. Some had only one piece of cloth that would cover the top half until their knees and some of them just had barely enough just to cover their satar. This was the Ahl al-Sufa. Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala an farmate hai ke ye Ahl al-Sufa itne gharib thai ke baazo ke paas sirf ek chadar thi joh gutno tak aati thi aur baazo ke paas sirf ek aisi chadar thi joh sirf satar chupani ke liye kaafi tha. He says the Ahl al-Sufa wathala bin asqa Radiallahu ta'ala an, he mentioned 
that Ahl al-Safa were those individuals who hardly had any clothes. And if they did, they had one piece of cloth that was full of patches and their bodies were full of uh, male and kuchel all the time. وَأَثْلَا بِنْ أَسْقَى فَرْمَاتِ هَيْنْ يَحْسُ أَصْحَابِ الصُّفَى تو وہ لوگ تھے جس کے پاس کپری بھی نہ تھے جو پرانا کپرا تھا اور پسینے کی وجہ سے بدن پر میل اور کچیل جمع رہتا تھا مگر اللہ کے یہاں وہ لوگ اتنے محبوب تھے in the eyes of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی these individuals were very loved these individuals were very loved by the almighty Allah سبحانہ وتعالی they would sit and learn about the deen uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and memorize the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala and says that they were so poor, they were so poor that times would come that we would starve of hunger so much that we would place our stomach on the ground and from the coolness of the ground we would feel the coolness on our stomach and that would help ease our pain of hunger. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an farmate hain ke baaz aukat bhuk ki shiddat aisi hoti thi ke zameen ki oopar hum ap leet jate aur zameen ki oopar jo zameen se jo thandak aur hararat hoti thi to us ki aja se hum apne bhuk ko aur peet ko tasalli dete hai baaz aukat پیٹ پر پتھر باندھتے تھے سم ٹائمز وی وڈ ٹائی سٹونز ٹو آر اسٹمک ٹو میک ایٹ فیل از اف دیر واز سم فوڈ دیر آئی آلریڈی مینشن دا اسٹوری اف ابو ہورے رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ ان دا بیگننگ اف دا سیرا از ا ریمائنڈر آئی ایم مینشن ایٹ ونس اگین اباؤٹ دا ہنگر اف دا اصحاب الصفا ابو ہورے رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ واز پارٹ اف دا اصحاب الصفا ہی واز پارٹ اف دا پیپل اف دا بینچ ابو ہورے رضی اللہ تعالی اصحاب الصفا میں سے تھے He says, on one occasion, I was so hungry, I was so hungry that I sat in the pathway and I seen Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an ke ek din mein bhuk ki itni shiddat thi ke mein raaste mein bait gaya Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an udar se guzre to mein ne usko se ek ayat qurani ka matlab dariyaf kiya I asked him in regards to one ayat of the Quran He gave me the answer I was hoping that he'd entertain me, take me and entertain me with him to his home but that wasn't the case maine samjha ki ye masla puchunga to ye jo hai mujhe apne ghar le jayenge aur kuch khana bhi khila denge to magar abu bakar radhiyallahu ta'ala ne mere ne mera ye gharz nahi samjha to isi tarah haz umar radhiyallahu ta'ala an just like this haz umar radhiyallahu ta'ala an came i did the same to him but haz umar radhiyallahu ta'ala an again didn't understand my Uh, reason for asking then the best of creation the jewel and the cream of the progeny of Adam alayhi salatu was salam passed by and he smiled and he said oh Abu Huraira come with me and I accompanied the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mujhe Abu Huraira ko bulaya aur kaha mere saath ao I went with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we seen that someone had presented The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a cup of milk. Ek piala dood Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ko pesh kar diya gaya. Here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had seen me and my eyes had lit up seeing that I have something. I have something after so many days of hunger. I have something to drink. Finally, now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then calls and says, Oh Abu Hurairah, call the Ashab of Sufa. And I think to myself that calling the Ashab of Sufa, what would be left for me for this small uh, cup of milk? So Abu Huraira Dilao Ta'ala ko ye kaha ki Ashab of Sufa ko bulaye. So Ashab of Sufa had come. And now when the Ashab of Sufa are present, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked me to now feed the Ashab of Sufa first. I gave to Ashab of Sufa thinking in my mind, That if I start with them, there will be nothing left for me. Then, I have given the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I have given the Ashab al-Sufa to give the Ashab al-Sufa. So, I have given the Ashab al-Sufa to give the Ashab al-Sufa. They thought that there will not be anything for me. Then, 
as all the Ashab of Sufa drank to their fill until they could not drink anymore, then the Prophet Sallallahu asked me, who is left? Ashab of Sufa ne pee liya, hatta ke wo aur pee nahi sakte the, ke uske baad Rasul Sallallahu ne mujhse poochha, ke abhi koon baaki hai? And I said, me and yourself, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, me aur aap baaki hai. The Prophet Sallallahu smiled and said, O Abu Huraira, drink. The Prophet uh, Abu Huraira says, I drank, and I drank until I could not drink anymore. So, Abu Huraira jaan farmate hai, ke meinne piya, hatta ke mein aur pi nahi sakta, uske baad Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ne piya. After this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had drunk. This was the Ashab of Sufa, uh, and this was their state. At night, what would happen, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned by Abdurrahman bin Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. He says that Ashab al-Sufa were poor. Ashab al-Sufa were gharib the. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night they would take them to the night. The same has been mentioned by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would distribute them amongst the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Some would have two, some would have one and some the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would take with him at home. On one occasion, it is mentioned that Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu ta'ala an would take up to 80-80 at a time sometimes and take them home and feed them. And they would see feed the Ashaba Sufa uh, and give them their meal. And this would happen every night they would feed the Ashaba Sufa. This is why uh, ulama have taken from this that bringing food to the masjid and feeding the poor and the destitute is a good act, it's a mustahab act. <clears throat> In regards to the Ashab Sufa, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had mentioned that these are those very individuals that are so loved by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that the angels have told me that these people are such that Allah's Rahmah descends upon them. Ke Rasul Sassam ek martaba farmate farmate huye suna sahab radhi Allahu ta'ala farmate hain Ayaz bin Ghanam radhi Allahu ta'ala an farmate hain ke maine Rasul Sassam ko farmate huye suna iska mafhoom ye hai ke ashab sufa to wo log the jiske upar Allah ki rehmat nazil hoti hai and whenever they make dua jab bhi wo dua karte hain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unki duaein qabool kar dete hain और ये वो लोग हैं जो हमेशा मस्जिदों में रहते थे हमेशा जुबान पर जिक्र होती थी आखिरत की फिक्र होती थी और मौत की तैयारी करते थे दीज आर दोस इंडिविजुअल्स दैट देयर माउथ वर ऑलवेज मॉइस्ट विद द जिक्र ऑफ अल्लाह सुभानहु व तआला एंड देयर हार्ट्स वर फिल्ड विद द लव ऑफ अल्लाह एंड हिज रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम एंड देयर वर ऑलवेज इन फिक्र ऑफ द आखिरत एंड देयर वर ऑलवेज प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर देयर डेथ दीज वर द असहाब सुफा हुज uh, who are loved by the uh, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This now brings us uh, to Ramadan becoming farz in the second hijri. Uh, it's saying by the end of Sha'ban, uh, the verses of Shahr Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lil-Nas wa bayyinati min al-Huda wal-Furqan fa man shahida minkum al-Shahra falyasum these verses were revealed Umm al-Mu'mineen Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala an they mention wa farmate hai ke Madinah Manawara tashif lai jab hum jab Rasul Sassam Madinah Manawara tashif lai to Soma Ashura yani 10 Muharram ka roza rakhne ka hukum tha jab Ramzan ke roze farz hue to Rasul Sassam ne ye farmaya کہ آشورہ کا روزہ اختیار ہے چاہے رکھو چاہے افطار کرو In regards to the blessed month of Ramadan then the verses will reveal that to fast in this uh, blessed month in this month when the Quran was revealed and another verse says يَعِيُوَ الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ and Umm al-Mu'mini Sayyidah Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها and Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar, Amr radiallahu ta'ala mentioned that when the Prophet Sassam went to Madin to Manawara, then at that time the fast of Ashura was compulsory. But after this command was revealed, then the fast of Ashura uh, 
became optional and the fast of Ramadan became farz. This all happened in the second year of Hijri. Also in the second year of Hijri, uh, Sadaqatul Fitr and Eid Namaz also uh, was established and Eid Al-Adha uh, was also made wajib and uh, Qurbani uh, and uh, Qurbani also. Uh, as mentioned in the second year of uh, Hijri that when uh, Ramadan there was a few uh, there was a couple of days left of Ramadan Sadqatul Fitr uh, was made wajib and uh, Salatul Eid uh, and the verse is Qad aflaha man tazakka wa dhaka rasma rabbihi wa salla and likewise with Eid al-Adha fasalli li rabbika wanhar uh, that to make the Qur'ani. This all happened in the second year of Hijri when uh, Ramadan had become first. All this had become first. Also in the second year of Hijri uh, the, the verses Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Well also reveal in sending the rood and salutations upon Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that to some say that this will happen at the time of Mi'raj, but many say as mentioned in Fathul Bari, also it mentioned in Fathul Bari, Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala mentions that this happened uh, 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 in the second Hijri, uh, that these verses were revealed to send the rule and salutations upon Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also in the second Hijri, or Dusri Hijri mein, jo hai Eid al-Fitr, or Eid al-Adha, dono wajib huye, isi tarah sadqatul fitr bhi, aur isi tarah Rasul Sassam ke upar durood bejne ka, aur zakat ka bhi farziya nazil huwa. Like this, the, uh, to uh, give zakat of your wealth, one of the pillars of Islam, was also uh, revealed as mentioned, and many of the jumhur uh, say that this was revealed in the second uh, Hijri uh, after the Farziya of uh, the Sawmi Ramadan. These all took place in the second Hijri uh, after the Prophet Sallallahu had migrated uh, to Madinatul Manawara. So many such commands uh, and pillars of Islam were revealed in the second Hijri uh, after the Prophet Sallallahu had migrated to Madinatul Manawara. Is Dusri Hijri mein the Sallallahu ke Hijrat ke baad, bohut se ahkam uh, nazil huye uh, Ramadan ke masail aur Ramzan ke uh, roze farz huye isi tarah zakat bhi farz hua aur isi tarah sadqatul fitr ka hukam hua aur Eid al-Adha aur Eid al-Fitr ka bhi ye hukam San Hijri do mein nazil huye aur isi tarah uh, Rasul Sassam ke upar uh, darud bejna bhi uh, Hassan Hijri Dome Nazil Hui. Inshallah, from here now it brings us in about fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yahan se per jihad fi sabidillah ki bare me baat kiya jayega. Inshallah, tomorrow in the blessed seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi we will continue. Just to finish off, as always, we go through in talking about one of the sunnats of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst the sunnats of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, we learned yesterday in how meeting our friends meeting our friends uh, and how it was an act of worship now one of the sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prohibition of traveling alone. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an huma narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if people knew what I knew about the hardships associated with traveling alone, i.e. at night, uh, none would venture to travel alone at night. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an huma narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited traveling alone. Sayyidina Amr uh, Ibn Shu'aib radiallahu ta'ala anhum narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 
a person traveling alone is shaitan and two people are also shaitan three people traveling are regarded as a group and a jama'ah okay so it shows that when we travel we should travel uh, in a group and not alone because anything can happen and there's many benefits of traveling uh, in a group of three at least or a group uh, of more than three why because if a person is alone if something happens and something takes place there will be no one to uh, find help for that individual uh, so if there's a few of them then at least uh, they can help out each other in difficult times and in hard uh, times and avoid of danger so this was one of the habits of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, that whenever uh, he would send anybody out then he would send them as in a group out and not on their own also one of the sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ, before departing anywhere on any journey the Prophet ﷺ would instruct to perform two rakats of salah before departing this was one of the sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ, that whenever you're traveling anywhere whether we're traveling to London or outside the country or holiday wherever we're going Perform two rakats, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for safety, and then we travel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the true understanding to what has been said and try to implement the sunnahs in our life. Wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.